to do something and it seems like you have the fiddle stick, like it's one part of the idea, so maybe you can go on uh, and uh, elaborate on the thing. So that's how I came to know the Pulin. Uh, so Pulin's uh, thesis undergraduate study is from St. Stephen's College, one of the leading colleges in India, in New Delhi. And then he did his master's and PhD from Ohio State University in America. And uh, then he went on to do his postdoc. Uh, he was a humble fellow with uh, Gerard Essen, yes. a Nobel laureate in uh, chemistry, right? He got it in uh, 17, huh? 2007. 2007. And uh, you know, after coming back to India, he joined IIT Bombay and has been with the Department of Physics ever since. Now, as he just now described his lab, his lab is the one of the most bohemian labs, that's what that's the term that he used. So I think that app, that, that term is quite apt, it describes quite well uh, the persona and the lab and you know the kind of, it's, it's, it's very, you know we have, we have had some very animated discussion and you know it shows us the excitement and the love that he has for physics and life. So I'm pretty sure that it, that's going to show up also during the talk that he's going to deliver now on brainwave entertainment. Yeah, for them it's not a problem, but I put for the record. Is it on? No, I think not. Is it on? Yes, thank you. I'm going to shout. Uh, all right. So usually when you give a talk, you put your name and then you talk about your collaborators at the end. But this, this is something special because all the work that I'm going to talk about is done by the student. And time and again during the talk, I'll say, Richard did this, Richard did that. And this girl is very special as well. I don't know how many of you have seen the movie Dangal, the Fogart sisters. She's the cousin, but she jumped from the wrestling to the physics, and she's kicking ass in physics as well. So, she, and all the work, and I remember when I became 50, uh, I decided that I need to do something important in my life, and I, all the knowledge and the technical know-how I required working with other systems, chemical systems, physical systems, I wanted to do something in biological systems. So the Department of Physics gifted me an EEG machine, all right, as a birthday gift. And I started working in it, and we started playing with it. And in walks Richa, she was doing a master's project with me, and she said, I would like to try this as well. So we started working together. And then when it was time to choose a PhD, I offered her numerous projects involving chemistry, physics, other things, equilibrium, non-equilibrium dynamics. She says, no, I want to work on brain waves. And I got really scared because I had no idea about brain and how the complexity, because it was just a hobby and fun to work with, just to attract students, collect data, show them, look, there is irregularity here, stuff like that. But to become a PhD stu a student in this, I would say she was crazy at that time because I, the, the, the guide is not sure. She is a physicist, theoretical to start with. 
this is a totally different ball game but kudos to her so she deserves her name over here and all the work that i'm going to talk about is going to be all her results that she has obtained over the last two years at least she has found something to deserve a phd and she she put she plans to continue with this so the two main things i'm going to talk about is entrainment and brave this one i feel comfortable with because i've worked over the years as i'll show you and brain waves is the part that is new to my uh, research uh, uh, curriculum okay since i'm not taking anything for granted you need to know what is entrainment entrainment the video can go on i can keep on talking entrainment is something if you have a natural frequency of an oscillator you do something to it and entrain it means change it according to the specification of your protocol what you want it to be you could change its frequency you could change its profile so on and so forth so this is the most common chemical reaction as you see it has a rhythm to it and that is indicated by the changing of colors as time goes on so if i was to plot the concentration of a certain reactant as a function of time it shall oscillate like a period one oscillation if you don't understand any of the syntax or the jargon of the language please ask me it's just like a sine wave or a cosine wave depending on your initial conditions it goes on like this so if i have this eventually it will die out because these reactions don't go ad infinitum if they're in a close vessel because they are out of equilibrium remains for a little while so you see it is in changing colors cyclically from blue to the light light colors and so on and so forth so this is a natural oscillation you have seen oscillations the diurnal oscillations a lot of oscillations are part of life rhythm is what keeps us alive is that correct otherwise you are if you if you're not oscillating you're dead so rhythm is this now entrainment is that if you have a certain rhythm autonomous which is by itself generated by the system and then you try to put a forcing on it usually is done by forcing we have done some with coupling as well uh, in which you change the frequency of the system so this is a cartoon that richard drew i don't like it but she insisted i put it over here so in this the, she has a pendulum going around in 360 which has a frequency which is given by dimensionless 0.5 units and then she's going to put a force field and you shall see that the frequency changes from 0.5 to 0.7 so this is the most common example of entrainment you see so it started with a 0.5 and then as the force field goes on it goes on and collapses in the vicinity of 0.7 because that was the desired frequency of the system via the perturbation autonomously it would have oscillated around here now it's gone over there entrainment happens everywhere the mo what, what do you think is the most common example of entrainment your circadian rhythm right it's generated by the days and the nights of the thing and that is what okay i have to stop this circadian rhythm you have each of us get up at certain time go to bed regulated and then as you travel and then you get into trouble because of the jet lag because you know uh, your circadian rhythm gets up so the point i am to try to make is entrainment is essentially forcing a system to do something which it naturally does not do and can we use it for something good in uh, brain waves i'll eventually come to that another example of entrainment that we had done in a previous system i don't want to go to much details of the system is just a mercury beating heart the name suggests it looks like a beating heart system so you put some mercury you put it in sulfuric acid you have a concave vessel you put an oxidant the oxidant anions come to the surface they mutually repel it expands the surface tension decreases and then this is an iron rail so they keep on expanding till it touches reduction happens it goes back surface tension normally has to be high right and this is the rhythmic behavior that you generate over here which is shown by, which was just shown to you i don't know whether it'll go back again if i go back here so this is the cyclic expansion 
and contraction of the mercury drop. And this we have studied in the lab a lot. And first thing we did was we tried to change the frequency of this. And not only did were we able to change the frequency of this, we were also we made the drop such that it oscillates in an irregular fashion. So the maxima and the minima don't, co don't coincide. And if you put a forcing frequency on it, you can actually revert, you can change the irregular oscillations, which is a histogram which is di uh, distributed to a single frequency oscillation. So free entrainment is a very strong control protocol that is used in nonlinear dynamics. So as an experimentalist, when you do it, you have to repeat it. So you had the off, on, off, on. And every time the test is in the fact that if you put it off, it should go back to its rever revert back to its original behavior, which is aperiodic. We can also look at the surface of the mercury, and it also shows when it's oscillating irregularly, you have a irregular waveform. And then when you have a forcing function on it, it becomes period one oscillation. This is shown. Yes, you have a critical value uh, beyond which it will work. And there's an upper threshold as well also because you squish that, yeah. So you, on the left-hand side, you, you see, if you can notice, the surface is irregularly oscillating, you know? It makes different shapes as time goes on. On the contrary to the right, on my right, yeah, you're right, you're right as well, you have a cyclic vibration. So this is the video corresponding to the time series which was shown in the previous slide. So to re reiterate and to finalize, irregular oscillations in the absence of the forcing and regular oscillations when you have forcing impinged on the system. So this was our background. We knew entrainment, we felt comfortable with it, and also we tried entrainment different ways. And this is another system we worked on. I'm not gonna go into the details about corrosion of a copper in sulfuric acid. And here we were able to actually uh, achieve entrainment by mutual coupling of two oscillators. If the frequency between them is adjusted, and I show you a time series space of one to two entrainment. So you realize for every one oscillation of one of the electrodes, you have two oscillations for the other one. And this is something technical, which you don't need to know, but for the sake of completeness, I need to tell you, we can generate something which is called an Arnold Tonk, which has devil's take structure. So you have an entrainment of one to one over here, two to one over here, one to two over here and you can get different behaviors, and it all collapses down in the nomenclature of uh, nonlinear dynamics is called Arnold Tom. So I hope I can, I've convinced you that we have worked on entertainment before, so if you feel very comfortable with it. But now, we use a new experimental system, and that is the human brain, all right? This, if you are a nonlinear dynamics or you like, complex things, this is the mother of all the systems. It shows everything. It shows space-time irregularity. It shows collective dynamics. It shows... Yes. I said it reverts back. Otherwise, it ain't gonna work because it means you have drifted the system to the new parameter space. So it actually has to go back. That's why you have the on, off, on, off to show when you take it off, it goes back to your natural state. Did I answer your question? Okay. So this is now experiment system ours. This is, and it looks fascinating, you know. Brain has been, in my opinion, is the most complex system you have available in the universe. And people have been fascinated all the way from artists to, uh, to philosophers to scientists in trying to f decode this thing. I mean, the, the, the fascination and the, it's just encapsulated. If you, Descartes, what did he say? I think, therefore I am. It's so amazing, you know? It's so complicated. It shows everything you wanted to show, but still you don't know much about it. 
all the people might come claim on the contrary. It, it's, it's really very, it's an intangible uh, mystery of life. To the best of what, what I'm going to tell you is basically you can do it in books or in Wikipedia, nothing new here. So you have three essential parts to the best of my knowledge. You have the brain stem, which regulates involuntary motion, uh, things like the blood pressure and uh, the metabolism, things which you don't control but happen without you knowing it, all right? Then you have the cerebellum, which like does more advanced thing like the motor control and stuff like that. What we are fo focusing on, and you will realize sure why, uh, soon enough why, is the cerebrum, is the cranium, is the outermost region, which has in f four distinct regions. So you have the temporal lobe, the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, and the occipital lobe. For our regions of interest are the temporal lobe and the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe. Because what we are trying to do is entrain the system, entrain the brain using light and sound, okay? The photic stimulation, which is the light, affects in the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe. This is all well documented by people who have been working on this. And the auditory stimulus, the sound, works it shows its effects in the temporal lobe. So for the purposes of my talk, I'll be focusing on these things. Why? Because what I'm measuring is the EEG, which is the electroencephalogram, which measures the activity of the neurons. Neuron, the, how, how many rec neurons do you reckon we have? We have billions of neurons, right? And they're interconnected by synapses. You have axons, you have dendrites, and they have bundles, and each neuron fires. And what we measure, I don't know how, have, has anybody seen the EEG machine? You put a scalp mask, uh, like a skull mask, right? Something like what these people are wearing, uh, right? With electrodes put on, no, 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 no jokes apart. It's, 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 it's like this, with ele predetermined electrodes, electrode spaces. And then you measure the output. So essentially, if you realize you are confined to these activities on the surface of the brain, right? There are fancier equipment which would allow me to drill holes and then measure that. And being a physicist, I'm not worthy. I can't do that. So what we measure is essentially the activity of neurons which lie near the surface of the brain, which are also called the pyridomical neurons, I think, and they're perpendicular to the brain surface, and you measure the activity. And essentially, the activity has been classified in the literature belonging to these categories, all right? Alpha is supposed to be therapeutic, which is the 8 to 12 hertz, which it's a feel-good vibration that you have if you generate alpha. So if it's, it's a relaxed state and you have an act, which are alpha is mostly in the parietal and the occipital region and has the frequency between 8 to 12 hertz. When you are in light sleep, as you get older, you would not perhaps have that problem. You have wave activity between the 4 and the 8 hertz, which is the theta. And this is deep sleep. In this, perhaps, in between this, you have the REM movement, when you have the rapid eye movement, and you have the frequency. But basically, babies have 1 hertz to 4 hertz. Very, very slow waves. On the contrary, when you are doing exams, or, or maybe not, I mean, maybe pe when people struggle, I, I, when I take the exam of the IIT kids, and then there are like 200 of them, and I'd say five minutes before at the end of the exam, I can gen, if I have the EEG machine, I'm sure I'll be measuring betas and gammas. Because this is when you're doing cognition, you're doing Rubik's Cube, you're doing things which are puzzles and Sudoku, whatever you name it, and it'll, this. so these are which connected to heavy alertness of state for our purposes. This is a relaxed state, and it's supposed to be therapeutic. And 
you have the deltas and the thetas corresponding to the comatose, not comatose, a, a sleep state, right? Light sleep and dark sleep. So this, this kind of, I don't want to remember them, just be aware that we'll be working in this range. When you're sleeping, you will get in this interval. When you are uh, relaxed, yes, yes. What you measure, uh, so what you uh, to, to come back to Shamik's question, you put electrodes. Uh, I don't do that. When you have EEG, you basically measure the neuronal activity of the, as I said, the pyramidal uh, uh, neurons, which are on the surface of the brain. And we place, we have 24 electrodes. Out of which we use 20, we place them in a protocol which has been used, a montage and a protocol which has been uh, recommended in the literature all over the brain with these specific points. I'll tell, I'll tell you the relevant ones which we use. And this is your nose, these are ears, right? So you, uh, when you are not, when you're starting out, when we started out, we had the uh, skull mask or the scalp mask in which the position of the electrode is already uh, glued. So you just put the, uh, put the wire and then you measure this. But once you are an expert like Richa, now she can do it by herself because sometimes she feels that the mask uh, uh, does not do the things properly. So in this case, what we use is a referential montage. What do we mean by that? This is essentially the EEG electrodes are glorified version of differential amplifiers. So they measure the, electro the, the, the neuronal activity which is of the units of 10 to the power minus 6 volts and amplify them so you can register them and look at them and analyze them, okay? So you, in the referential montage, you measure the, volt, uh, the, the, the activity difference between two electrodes, right? And all the electrodes are measured common to one electrode. Do you understand? So I will measure, uh, for our purposes, FPZ is the referential electrode. The entire activity of the 20 are measured as, as this is the reference. This is called the reference, ah, yeah, it says that, referential montage with FPZ as the common electrode. Why FPZ? Because it has the minimal activity. You can measure with respect to each other also, but in that time, sometimes it cancels out. So the activity is lost. So it's the safest is to, what people use is referential montage. I don't know which one do you use? You, you also use referential? Yeah, FPZ is the reference also, because this other groups differ, right? So we have FPZ as the uh, uh, reference electrode and each of the electrode is measured. Now you realize, when you have activity in the order of millivolts, what is the risk? It is prone to contamination, right? And human beings, and the contaminations could be internal or external. External would be like the faulty electric lines, stuff like that. Internal, which we which are much harder, is first of all blinking. You can't suppress that, right? The moment you blink, there will be a spike in your trace. But, th but this is not neuronal activity, so it's an artifact. So when we look at the data, you need to ensure that you have eradicated these episodes of artifacts that you see in your activity, all right? So this is another one. Another one that is when you gulp or when you are breathing, uh, your, your heartbeat, that is also recorded by the EEG. So all these activities you need to take sure. Moreover, the subject needs to be at, should not have any muscle movement, so it should be relaxed, all right? The problem we had with this is that most of these IIT kids in the night, they never sleep. I don't know why. We call them nishachar, right? And they come and they put them in a relaxed state and they go to sleep on the couch and the data is destroyed. So we have to be very, very careful uh, to get these artifacts right. Okay. So this is actually uh, the scan we did here. So you have the blink artifact, you have the electrodes. People recommend four, but we use only three because we are conjuice, uh, because we want more data for to analyze. So we use 
20 for data analysis and 4 for artifacts, 3 for the eye. We don't take this, or maybe we don't take this. And then we take 1 for the breathing. So 20, 20 out of 24, we use 20. So this is ours. This is a subject whom na whose name I cannot take, right? Because it's confidentiality agreement. I, I like that. So, and then this is what we show. This is channel A1 is the heartbeat. It's an artifact. So we exactly know where it is. And there are the three more to uh, look at the eye. The rest is the, this is the neuronal activity. I still love this because this is the first slide of our data with our subject. This was a big problem because we started the experiments, then we realized we needed ethical clearance. I did not know that because I never have had done that, right? I mean, chemistry, who cares? You know, you do mercury, you put a mask and all that. And then I, I thought the student can do it. No, the student cannot do it. I had to go. And I was surrounded by 16 medical doctors asking me questions. I, 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 it was, I don't know. I, I just said we're not going to do anything invasive. We're, and they was, and the biggest concern they had was I'm going to coerce my students into being my subjects, otherwise I'll fail them. That is not going to happen. So we said we will not pay them. We will not give them free grades. We, they'll have no free exams, nothing. But we, Richa also helps that she, there are very few women in IIT, so she has a lot of subjects who will volunteer just because she is taking the data. Okay. So this is the alpha activity, which is seen. I don't know whether you can see this clearly. All this is other. But you see these episodes which are transient in nature. It happens once in a while. But the good thing is they happen simultaneously. This is the occipital domain and this is the parietal domain. As I said, these are the domains we're going to focus on because photic stimulation also works here. So how do you get the guy to go to alpha? Right? So you take him to a room. First, we had only one room. It could not work because peop some people were working with circuits here, chemistry here, it will not work. So now, Richa, we have given her an enclosure in which it's highly draped. So it's, uh, the, the, the lighting is gone. And she, uh, and, and, and this, she has this more fanciest couch. And then she actually puts the guy in a state where he cannot move. All right. And then he tells, she, boy, he listens to music for 10, 5 minutes, whichever he likes. Of course, not mega death or any hard rock that, that will elevate your uh, rhythm. Something, I don't know, Manu Cha or some, some, some relaxing uh, music. And then we take the data. I mean, we know. She takes the data, all right? Because uh, and th then people see uh, this alpha activity. Up until now, no entrainment has been done. This is the autonomous activity of the brain. Okay, so now what did we do with this? You tell me 10 minutes before, huh? I think I'll finish with it. Okay, just to make a point again. So these are the time traces of the 24 electrodes of our EEG machine, right? Out of which four are to be discarded because they're artifacts and 20 are to be looked at carefully for the analysis. So here is the frequency spectra of the 20 which are being used, and you see a very nice peak around the 10 hertz, which is smack in the middle of the alpha domain, which was between 8 and 12. So all of you, okay, notwithstanding that you're not aliens, should have, when you're relaxed, regardless of the gender, an activity of this. And this is supposed to be good. I must, I'm sure you must have read it. Alpha is good for, uh, for relaxing and meditation. People do all this thing, right? Okay. This is fine. Now, what do you want to do? All right. We said, now we want to entrain it. Remember, entraining is changing what we see autonomously, right? But we, I was a little scared uh, because once she did the experiments on me and I, maybe it's placebo effect, I felt I weird. So I said, let's start with perturbing with the same frequency as the 10 hertz. Let's see, can we enhance the 10 hertz by perturbing with 10 hertz when you should be in the alpha state and in the vicinity of 10 hertz between 8 and 12, right? Do you get my point? So I'm going to perturb you with kind of a resonant frequency of your own, right? So in this case, this is what we did was we use eight LEDs. 
about 1000 lux, about 100 centimeters from you, and we made them switch on and off, right? A white light with a uniform distribution. So they would go switch on, on and off at a frequency of 256 hertz. Uh, no, no, data acquisition was 250 hertz. Uh, frequency, I'll tell you, it was on off um, one second. One second. One second off, one second on, one second off, one second on. Okay? So the protocol was this. This is to a guy who, who had just come into the lab. Okay? So zero to eight minutes, he's made to sit down in a relaxed state. Hopefully generating alphas by then. 8 to 18, the stimulus applied in which you see on off, on off of white light, photic stimulation, lights going off to on, one second sustaining in that state, then going back. Okay? All eight of them. And then 18 to 26, revert back because we need to sh make sure that you go back to the alpha state, or uh, whatever state you're in, right? Then repeating since we experiment this we believe replicability is the best way to ensure that things are working and then she does some magic in uh, MATLAB which I had no idea you have EEG lab software where you clean the data essentially what she tells, tells me is that she looks for artifacts gets rid of that time scale and then you repeat the subject you have five students uh, I don't know them. I mean, I know them, but I don't know which department, wherever they are from. And we repeat the experiments with five. And then what we saw, if you look, uh, I'll explain to you, that we saw the entrainment in an occipital lobe. So this is the scalp mask, scalp map, sorry, of the guy without the entrainment. This is the scalp map with the entrainment. I, I'm, and I, you can surely show, see the difference, right? There's an enhancement, and this is the occipital lobe, the, the, the back part. If you remember the cartoon of the brain I showed you, occipital is the black part, and there's an enhancement of the generation of alpha at this. I'll show you the frequency diagrams to corroborate this, uh, this cartoon as well. So in this case, with the photic stimulation of 10 hertz, you have the blue is the autonomous state, the red is the perturbed state, perturbed or entrained state, whatever you want to call it. So you see blue, I mean, that's why I asked to zoom this, it's clear that the contribution to the blue has increased in the red. So there is definitely generation of mass, uh, more alpha because of the entrainment. That was the goal. We are entraining with 10 hertz. You should get more of 10. But 10 happens to be close to the alpha. Too bad, right? So this is what you see. So the blue, the red is bigger than the, uh, the bigger than the blue. And not only that, you have this generation of a super harmonic, which was not there with the autonomous alpha. So you get a generation of 20 hertz, which is due to the entrainment. So not only are you enhancing the existing frequency, you're creating a new frequency. The re results get ludicrously interesting in the next part. You'll see that. So if so, what, this is the Fourier spectra. As I, as I said, blue is without the stimulus. Red is with the stimulus. We have three electrodes in the occipital range, the O1, OZ, and the O2. The reason we will do OZ is because uh, one is on the left and the right, so we didn't know if the guy was left-handed or right-handed. Just to break the symmetry, we just said we'd take the center one. You know, there might be some skewness because of that. I didn't want to get into that trouble. So if this is, this is the, something called the short-term Fourier spectra. It is basically times uh, short-term. You see what is happening. So you see for the autonomous things, you have brief striations of yellow hair. So you see, what it means is it's consistent with, 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 with what I had shown you here. So you have episodes of 10 and then going away, coming back. So this is basically a color representation of this. On the contrary, when you have the perturbation on, you see enhancement of 10. And as I pointed out, a generation of 20. Only, yes, please. No, it does not, because, see, this is without the stimulus. It goes back to this. So this is, uh, as I said, 
this is the protocol so when i talk about relaxed state i am showing you this yeah and i'm show, when i'm showing you the entrained state i'm showing you this okay before 8 means of course you have to get the guy ready make him sit down hopefully get relaxed but after this this is no no windows of uh, resting this is from a because it gets uh, um, it's hard for a student also right 44 minutes to stay still you know and people don't give you that much time to do exp to, to be the subject until this you pay them and you don't pay them they're like one hour is enough so this is hard and fast and we decided this after talking to a couple of doctors also this is the best we could do i mean and we have to maintain the same protocol across the five subjects all the doctors said it was not necessary but we since see this is what physics does to you, you become very rigid i mean if you have to have the same error bars for everybody so we decided we do that no this goes there is no break in between from 0 to you are there your mind for, you know your recharge for 45 minutes no nothing is before that of course you relax you sit down you just can't walk into the lab and timer on that ain't going to happen okay so there should be some minus 10 minutes of uh, preparation time a to 18 and then it repeats itself between 26 to 30. so it peaks and then it comes then it back, comes back. and i i will give you more convincing argument with regarding that yeah because see right now is dubious because you already have 10 you're getting more 10 then okay. you going back to low 10 let me let me show you something better so but this was the starting point i'm going to tell the whole story because this is how we started the only reason see maybe age makes you skeptical and cynical i was i was worried what was how the kids are going to react to frequencies which are not there that different from the alpha so we start started from 10 which is a fair game, fair game all right I think I explained that 10 uh, 10 hertz. And then of course you look it across all the four, uh, five subjects. You I mean I I think uh, maybe I should clarify this. Uh, everybody is not shamik here. So you have the STFT. So you have a, a envelope of Fourier Fourier spectra going along like this. So you have the intensity, the time and the frequency. So it's actually a sort of a heat map. It's like a, a blanket over it. so you can calculate the area under it and that's what we calculate with the frequency with she calls it eta so between the frequencies from 5 to uh, 20 hertz 40 hertz my apologies and time from 3 to 1 to that so higher the contribution higher the this quantity so you this eta you plot across the five subjects these are the medians so this is the off on state off state on state off state so this is across the five subjects so it's like taking the talking boys and the two at the back right all five of you same things will happen which is beautiful because uh, everybody is so different i mean this is not a chemical system right? i mean we have bi biochemical whatever you want to call it but this was across and uh, i think all five are boys that i know but i don't know uh, uh, more than that okay then we became braver right we said we'll do six now why six is harder to entrain with a lower frequency because pacemakers are usually high frequency will six work so we did the same experiments now i don't want to explain anything because you know the protocol everything is identical right and you see the spectral density with this. so not only do you have the 10 you see 10 has reduced a little bit right because he was natural alpha but you have 6 you have 18 you have 24 which were not there in the autonomous oscillator this gives credence to a previous inkling that you can create frequency because 20 was created but people can say ah it's a sub, sub, uh, su super harmonic maybe it is there but now 6 was not there you see that 6 and the sup super harmonic of the perturbing frequency is created not of the 20 so you look at these red ones new peaks are coming on same manifestation if you look at uh, the short term fourier spectra concentration around 10 when it is not 
perturbed and then you have this more is towards the yellow towards the lower part which is corresponds to 6 hertz 18 hertz so on so forth okay so you do entrain your a brain using photic stimulations i always thought people say when you're sad you should listen to this music this music it will work in auditory as well so we definitely said try we did not put music we, we said we use white noise as photic we use white noise as sound of course with the appropriate interval right indeed exactly the off state is the same throughout indeed it's so evident here this is the off state 10 episodes of 10 and then you get this you actually decrease the contribution from the 10 because now you are doing it with the 6 so you are converting from alpha to 6ish i don't 6ish uh, is theta types right but again this is i have no idea what the guy or girl, uh, is a guy what the guy is feeling because we don't ask him we are not therapist we just say data is there because sometimes you ask them I feel that there could be placebo effect so we don't even ask how you're feeling so we don't know are you sleepy because in the theta said none of these questions we, we, we deliberately avoided this for us you are purely an oscillation which is cruel but that's true I don't know I don't care about your feelings I just want your data and this is the data right that's it hard hard facts and yet again not that good but that is to be expected because you're not at the resonant frequency but there is a consistent enhancement by virtue of the six hertz okay i have time right I'm, oh i have more i need more time we'll see all right then auditory this i really wanted to work because Muse, music does wonders, right? I mean, when you're sad, you have music. When you're in love, you have music. Everything is music. So it does not make sense that music doesn't affect the brain. But our science suggests on the contrary. If you do, okay, ours is not music. So now you have white sound going on and off. Same protocol, instead of noise, uh, instead of light we have noise okay sound sound that you hear <sighs> blue red nothing happens nothing happens moreover even if something does happen it's not sustainable through the five subjects we, so we first tried with the auditory stimulus of 10 hertz uh, maybe you say ah the red is bigger but see there are no 20 peaks no other the, the, the fascinating peaks that we saw with the 40 and on this one and these are the two temporal loads because I, as I said sound is in the temporal loads T6 doesn't show that T6 the blue is bigger than this right? I'm, this is, I'm just showing a, a prototype not, not that every subject shows this trend but the point is the, the convincing systematic enhancement that we saw in Fortec was not shown in auditory and we being physicists, we cannot say, ah, maybe for this guy it works, this guy does not work. So that doesn't work. So it does not work. So you're very scared because at least I was convinced it sh it's wrong, it should work. But, but then we found a paper which says that it is, but the point these people make is very true. We are not saying it does not work. It's just that we cannot measure that it works because we are just measuring the EEG maybe the effect is deep down and we don't have electrodes impinged into your brain that we are doing MEG or some other activity maybe it's a deeper uh, sort of an effect which are not observed because basically EEG is nothing but uh, mean field I mean uh, uh, it's the activity bunched together in a certain area of your brain maybe the sharp features which are affected by the sound we don't show up so sometimes the fluctuations are suppressed when you do the mean field maybe that is the phenomenon but we could not claim that it worked. This is a different load, right? This is not the uh, one. No, because uh, auditory is always registered in a temporal load. Mm. Yes, it is. It is accepted. It is accepted. No, no, no. 
it is accepted that sound if you see something has to be in the temporal lobe. Photic. That, that does, no, that is not, not possible now. And same thing for the six, which is, ah, I was not expecting six to work and surely it does not work. If it ain't going to work for ten, it definitely is not going to work for six. So nothing at all, nothing at all. So we said, okay, with a heavy heart, music does not work, at least for EEG, but you can keep listening to it, but let's do some more with photic stimulation. Then we got braver. And when you get braver, you do weirder things, right? So we said, let's do it with bi-frequency entertainment. Entertain, <laughs> entrainment. So we did eight divided four with to six hertz, four to 10 hertz, simultaneous. So because the claim is, it's, it's sort of a computer back there in the occipital domain, which sums up the, uh, the stimuli and uh, processes at the back. So what we did was, we put six centers simultaneously. So the four of the LEDs were going off on at one second at six hertz, so 15 times or 16 times, and the other one was going at 10 times, right? No, six times, 60, so one second. So you see what happens. The blue is the, and the autonomous thing, is just 10 hertz, right? Not only do you see 10, 6, you see 6 plus 10, 16. You see 10 minus 6, 4. So all algebraic expressions that you can imagine and their sub superharmonics are seen. So you see this red is showing at all the frequencies which were not present with the autonomous dynamics. So not only are you and uh, creating it at 6, but also at the various algebra. See, there's one at 4, there's one at 16, and their harmonics, 32, so on and so forth. See, consequently, the ST feed, ST, STFT has numerous striations compared to this one. This is a very docile alpha episode. Here you have generation of multiple peaks due to the fact that you have uh, an extra perturbation which is not only is, is by frequency. So what we were thinking now is let's try it okay not all again by frequency and it works across all the five subjects because this we have only five data points that's what we work with. So then we said let's do by frequency and trend 6 1 10 6 10 because last time it was half half now we do 6 and 10 6 and 10. It works, but one thing which was very cute here, I'll tell you, I don't know if you noticed. So you have the episodes of 10 going here. So you go 6 and 10, but do you see it actually jumps between 6 and 10, right? It jumps from here to here and so, uh, harmonics. So what it tells me is that the brain responds to it almost instantaneously. So when the frequency shifts, the activity shifts. So it's like a almost, there's no, what's that word? Latency is not there. There's no inertia. Almost immediately the brain responds to the perturbation. So you see the blues is the docile ones. You have the STFTs. Now it's not that rich because there's no summing going on because you have only six and then only 10. But this staircase sort of a phenomena you see, which tells you that you're sw switching from the frequency from one output to the other as your perturbation is being switched as well. So we saw this. Time is same. One second, so six would be how much? 10, 10 pulses and the other one would be six pulses. So I'm saying the, the, the relaxation time. I mean, suppose you respond to six uh -huh. and then you wait long enough, then the six pulse comes back and then the 10 but, uh, yeah, we, we have no relaxed time in between. It's always continuous perturbation. I see your point, but we don't have that uh, in our, enabled in our system. We, throughout, it's either off or on. Or when it's on, you have this continuous blinking, which I think could be, I mean, people could complain, it bothers them. But uh, so, uh, I should maybe apologize. When, when they listen to this, their eyes are actually closed. Because see, this is, uh, what is it called? Semi-opaque. 
So it's not that you're looking at this because you might go cuckoo, right? If you do that, you close your eyes and then you feel the light anyway. Do you understand that? When this stimulation is on, your eyes don't have to, you don't have to look at the white light going on and off. They actually close it, but with, I don't know, you do the experiment in the night yourself, close the, uh, close the light and put a uh, torch on or a cell phone light on, and I, I did that, and you can feel when it all on and off without having to look at it. So it's not that bothersome, because I used to worry, because if the kids are seeing this, they'll go cuckoo, no, right, if you, if you see this uh, perturbation going on, all right. And then we became extremely arrogant. I said, now, see, that, 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 that was the clue. I mean, the moment this we saw, we said, aha, so what if we put an aperiodic signal? Can we generate aperiodic brain waves? I'll tell you why. I'll, don't forget, I have a hope section, which I want to go to, right? So in this case, we took a uniform distribution between 5 and 15 in which the frequencies change within this interval randomly from one to the other. So you don't know, there is no pattern to it, right? And so you see this, this is your normal A, and then here the stimulation frequency changes every second. So for, if you're five, no, if you're 10, it'll blink 10 times, right, at that time, but then the frequency will change. Every second the frequency is changing. And if you look at that also, you get a periodic stimulus. But then I became a little cynical. I said, how do I know that it is exactly following the same stochastic sequence or the a periodic sequence of this, this thing? So I asked her to do some surrogate data. Surrogate data is we created the same distribution, uh, same statistical properties between 5 and 15, but the sequence was different. And then we calculated the cross correlation between the input and the output, okay? It's a really technical here, but we have to do something technical. So you calculate the, in, you have a correlation, you have a, you have an input perturbation, you have an output response. You calculate the cross correlation, right? And you see an enhancement. It has to be because they are correlated to each other. But then if you use other data sets, which have the same statistical distribution, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. There's much better for. So what we are claiming is that the output dynamics of the brain follow the exact aperiodic seed sequence that we are giving as a photic stimulation. So we can guide your brain to show a predetermined periodic and or a periodic pattern of our choice. Of course, there are limitations between 5 and 15. There could be something. So we were very happy. Uh, and of course, best thing is to check it works across all the four and uh, all the all the five subjects. And it does work. Okay. I'll just two more slides, right? Is, uh, this was the biggest surprise we had. But then, if you look long enough in the literature, people say it's almost instantaneous. We're not the one who found it. I mean, people have been working uh, on it for a long time. But of course, they did it to different other perturbations. I mean, ours is by freak. Nobody has done, I mean, okay, I should not say nobody. To the best of knowledge, nobody has uh, ventured into this, right? Because we come from a different field. So what, what can we conclude? At least he has a paper, he'll graduate, right? So that's, that was a big concern. Now we, have, we can be more adventurous about it. So visual entrainment also can be shown in the brain. We have, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be a chemical system, it's a, it's a uh, human brain. And you can see it as a function perturbed by a single frequency, by frequency, or in a periodic frequency. What do we want to do with this? I don't know whether we'll, we'll do it or not. See, I was, I worked in Mexico for a long time, and I used to visit uh, this, uh, for community service, uh, little uh, hospitals with little children. And some of these kids, 
had a, a, a epilepsy problem which is called petite mal. Petite mal from French, petite is small, mal is bad. So it, it's a little bad, you know, right? So what it gives you is seizures, it doesn't kill you. But it was very, very heartbreaking to see these little kids doing, not being able to control it. It makes you, makes your heart beat, right? And what the doctors do, and these are little kids, they're infants, right? This is months, barely a year old, right? Typical, I don't know whether you, in Hindu mythology, Sumeru Parvat attitude, you give them high dosage of drugs, and it suppresses, it, it puts them into this sort of a state where there's an, they don't go through these seizures. But God knows what collateral damage it's causing them. So we think, I mean, we, we hope, we pray, and although I don't, I'm, I pray for this, I'll pray for this. Can we, and a petite mal, so this is a seizure from a kid. You see, this is the natural brain waves that we saw, we showed also, right? A little bit of alpha here, some artifact. But when the seizure comes, these are high amplitude, low frequency, collective waves. Almost like you would think, I am in training here. Is the system autonomous dynamic? So there's a method to our madness. We said, so this is again the heartbeat that they demand. If we can guide a brain to a aperiodic pattern, what if we show this photic stimulation at this stage? Can we break the synchronized activity? The good thing is, it's non-invasive, right? The, it's free, right? And there is no medicine. Of course, nobody is going to allow us because we are just some moronic physicist at a dumb institution working on stupid experiments, right? Medical doctors, they, they, they will not allow us. And even if they do, the pharmaceutical companies will not let us <laughs> survive. This, the goal has been from day one to do something which is called biofeedback. Some groups in Germany are actually doing that. They are they're using photic stimulation. And of course, there's a little bit of selfishness involved also. See what happens when you grow older, you start losing your keys, you forget everything, right? So what if when you were young and your brain was optimal, the bestest ever, right? You store your brain waves. I mean, people s store sperms, they store their body parts, cryogenic. We store this as a photic stimulation. And when you grow old, if you see that, do you, can you suppress these little ailments that you have? I know, it's hope, that's why, it's hope. It's not gonna happen. So, can we use these non-invasive techniques to do something which could perhaps, in a small instant, help? It is not going to help uh, till we are able to collaborate with the medical doctors and stuff like that. But we have more results, but which, which, which are not documented because we have not done, analyzed them well enough. We show that there is a definite effect. And the good thing is, uh, the moment this seizure goes away, you put it off, you go back to, not the seizure, you go, you wait long enough, of course you don't know, you let it go on for two minutes, because these are episodes as well, the kids, you don't have seizures forever, you know, you go back, the hope is to just suppress it at then, and how, how cool would that be, I mean, zero medical cost, zero hurting the little babies, it would be wonderful, so we, we hope that biofeedback, somebody would ever, uh, perhaps not us, um, somebody else would use, because results seems to be encouraging, but I don't know. So, so with that, I'll thank you for your time and uh, I'll take any questions. We're dreaming, man. <laughs> we still don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and we, I don't claim to be brainy. I'm an, experim no, 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 no. I'm an experimentalist. I, so the theoreticians, who's, who's the string theorist here? Yeah, he was the brainy people. Yeah. 
they talk in 12 dimensional spaces and they uh, I can't even imagine a rubik's cube any questions from students and i'm sure i mean this is one of the top uh, you didn't see a single equation right i, mean, oh, I did uh, yes there was oh, the, the the equation for the cor correlation oh, oh, <laughs> 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 all right come on guys you, i cannot believe you don't have a single question No, no, no. We, uh, that's what I'm saying. The beat frequencies we use. It has to be. We are not only. I, I know infra. So dogs ki tra nahi. That we took care of. Yeah, it has to be in the uh, audible range. Yes, yes. That's a good question. I was hoping that somebody would ask that. Right. Yes. Yes. Go carry on. I'm here. sorry is, this is a i speak hindi also FaceTime or what? I didn't understand your question. I think the inner part of neuron. Neuron? EEG data. EEG data, the one that you mentioned. You are measuring actually the signal, like signal means electrical signal. Yes. If I put an electrode here, an electrode here, right? Whatever the signal is going, whatever, if you have an ammeter, which is very high frequency ammeter, whatever you're reading, that is being plotted. How time often the signal came to a Continuously. 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 It's, there is no, uh, it's, not, it's not being sampled or, uh, okay. 256 hertz. I mean, it's not continuous, my apologies. It's at the frequency of 256 hertz. You understand? I mean, you have a, it's basically ADC, right? There's a limitation of the frequency of the data can you, so our acquiring frequency is 256 hertz. So for practical purposes? It's continuous, yeah, it's, it's a continuous. Yeah. It's not like you record and then you So it's not stroboscopic, it's continuous. Any other questions from the? You can ask, maybe they'll also learn some things. One to two. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can try that. Uh, but it has to be ohm. It should not be, right? The frequency is the frequency, the frequency. Why, how, how can you have ohm uh, coded as frequency? But ohm is also, that is not three hertz, is it? I, I don't know. Some people say the universe oscillates as ohm. I, I, the YouTube is just amazing. Um, I, I, that is why I tell my students, if you have a false sick, don't look at YouTube because it will give you all the way from simple nasal congestion to uh, lymphosarcoma of intestine. All can, everything is covered in the system. So, I have no idea. I really think it works. I want it to work. But I, I cannot fudge. I, it, it cannot. I, my explanation and... Uh, it's the only one I have because I know it works. Music invokes something. Uh, uh, I know I, my father used to do this uh, 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 that Ravan's Jap, you know, Mithunjay Jap. It all works. But 
maybe it works on a deeper level aha eeg is superficial so maybe we need to put electrode inside exactly so but we we we, we that's the disclaimer see because i, I thought richa was so hassle because i wanted to work and she said nahi ho raha maan jao so he was yani she said then she she said something which shut me up right maybe it's at a deeper level we can't measure it so just the, the 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 lack of evidence it does not imply lack of effect right i mean it must be happening everybody can vouch for it but it doesn't work i mean when you go to wankhede and you see search a now virat something happens right some chanting there is also chanting a rhythmic chanting or you or rhythmic clapping you know everything there is at a frequency it i i i i think i know it I, for me it works all right but uh, I, i just because i can't record it doesn't mean it doesn't happen yeah yeah this is this is the fine boundary between uh, uh, science and uh, uh, other things right science is limited by what you can observe but that does not mean it does not happen sorry yeah yeah i cannot measure it but i'm sure it happens because i feel it and i'm not uh, you know i think it should it should work there is something happening any other quick questions no we we do six hertz also that is not the natural frequency we specific frequency and we have mono frequency no we did uh, the last one was not mono last last one was a, a, a was a between 5 and 15 hertz a, 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 a dis- uniform distribution that's the goal because if i want to okay see i didn't tell richard but the goal was to somehow break this synchronicity this this thing here if i'm going to put up with the periodic frequency it ain't going to work because it's just you know you put up with periodic you don't want periodic you want to break the break the rhythm which is regular when we talk about periodic input so this is simply done to say there are so many things to use different types of periodic correct but we choose it to be of a particular way we use it in the frequency domain indeed yeah sure sure any other questions sir you at the back okay all right chal so maybe we can have a rhythmic approach <laughs> cool okay mm. and if you cl- clap long enough it will synchronize huh. that i promise huh. oh, that's another talk <laughs> yeah that that's an and actually it synchronizes better in eastern european countries because the uh, the species are very close to each other they're very homogeneous on the contrary in countries like brazil or mexico or uh, america it will not work because we have diff- diverse cultures we have all own rhythms in india it will not work because in make sure it will not work <laughs> we we are a different level of ergodicity that way oh that is syn- that synchronous wave as well that's, that's the pacemaker wave that's for an excitable system and everything Thank you. Thank you.